just put on the bench because he just was not bringing it. But he did come around by the end of the season. He was more engaged. And when he is, he's a prideful guy. A lot of people like him in that locker room. Um, he has shown the ability to knock down a corner three. Um, he can be really efficient with the mid-range jumper and, and he talks and communicates on defense. So, um, when he is engaged, when he is locked in and and feeling good, he's an asset for them. He can be a plus for them and not this kind of, uh, sinkhole, terrible contract. Absolutely. From Tyler on Twitter, will the Wolves find minutes for a Kogi Wiggins, Covington, Culver, and Noel all at the two and three. Who will back up Covington at the four if he starts there? I think we already answered that one. And any rumors of plans at point guard? If D'Lo doesn't work out, will Tyus resign? Uh, so, um, Noel, I don't know if he's going to be in the rotation right away. He's, right. A, sec- he's a second round pick. I am intrigued by his skill set, and I think that there will be room for him eventually, but I just don't know right away if he's going to be there. He could see some G League time, or he could just be more of a 10th, 11th man to start, but they do have, I think, enough um, minutes to go around for Culver, Okogi, Wiggins, and Covington. Because if you can play Covington at the four, you can even play Wiggins at the four against some certain lineups. And so you can mix and match there a little bit. It's just a lot easier to get a ton of wings on the floor these days than maybe it was uh, a while ago when teams were bigger. Gerson Rosas spoke after the draft about Basically, essentially, teams are made up of a point guard, a big man, and and three wings now. And so that's the way that they're going about this. So I think there is plenty of time for all of those guys in a lineup like that. Uh, when you look at point guard, yeah, again, I think Russell is a stretch. I don't, I'm having a hard time finding a pathway to clear the space to get someone like him. So if you don't get him, there's a few avenues. I mean, you still have Teague under contract for another year. He can be a serviceable point guard for you for a year. There, there's even a thought internally that, look, he's going to be in a contract year. He's going to be motivated to play well. I mean, let's take advantage of that if we have to. So so you have that. Um, you have Derek Rose as a possibility. I still think he's a possibility to return in sort of a combo guard role. I think Tyus is absolutely a possibility to return. Um, I do think that he will get interest on the open market. And so then it's going to be a matter of does some team give him a big enough deal that pushes the Wolves close enough to luxury tax or you know, with, with the other things that they want to do that they say, you know, we want to keep you, Tyus, but we got to let you go. And so um, there is a market for Tyus Jones. Exactly what that offer is going to be, I'm not sure, but he is going to have several suitors out there that set the table for him and force the Wolves to make some sort of decision with him. I don't think this is a scenario where, where, where you see with a lot of restricted free agents where other where teams just like don't even mess with it. Right. Tyus has value. They, yeah, Tyus has value. He has he has people that that want that want to get him. So there there's I think the Wolves are going to have to make a, a, a choice there. Uh, good stuff. Let's see from uh, this is an interesting one uh, from Rom, Rob Crudites. Uh, tell me the point of caring about the Wolves. Doesn't seem like we'll ever be more than a fringe playoff team, including next season. No snark, just finding it hard to care anymore. I'll let John give you kind of the, the insider view. I'll just start with this. The San Antonio Spurs were a dominant NBA team. At an, and they were terrible before they were dominant NBA team. The Warriors were kind of an afterthought before they became a dominant NBA team. The Toronto Raptors were an expansion team and not a very good one for a long time, and they just won the NBA title. Uh, the Knicks, who would think you would think have all the advantages in the world, are completely dysfunctional and can't function. I mean, dysfunctional is the definition for the Knicks. It can be done, and it doesn't have to be large market and you don't have and there's a salary cap league so you can't get outspent. If you put the right people in place, you can win here and when and a winning NBA team is as entertaining as anything in sports. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look, yeah, things can change quickly and and I I can totally understand why he thinks things are never going to change. I mean, this is a franchise that for 50, last 15 years at least have been has been a laughing stock. They had one good season in those 15 years and it blew up in an incredible uh, fashion right after that. So Wolves fans have been conditioned to expect the worst and not believe that things are, are coming around. But you're right. The, the, the Bucks were going nowhere the until um, 
they hired the right people and put them in place. Um, you know, if you hire the right people, uh, things can turn around quicker than you imagine. We still don't know if Gerson Rosas is the right person. He has done some encouraging things so far um, to indicate that these are different times. Um, but the other part of it, too, is that it depends on sort of what you want out of sports as well. I mean, if if all you're looking for is a championship, then you're always going to be disappointed. I, I make that Almost I have that conversation always. all the time, and quite often with Twins fans. Like, I love it when the Twins are relevant. And if they ever win a championship again, great. But what I really want is meaningful games. Right. And so um, if, if that's your barometer for success, yeah, then, then there is no point in, in, in doing this. Because not saying they'll never win a championship, but it's just it's really, really hard, and you're, always, you're so often going to be disappointed. But there are a million things that happen during a regular season that are super entertaining, that are fun to watch and to see develop. I mean, it's going to be interesting to watch how they incorporate Jarrett Culver into the mix. It's going to be interesting to see if Carl Anthony Towns can take the leap from a very good all-star player to the type of leader that people follow into battle. It's, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what Ryan Saunders does um, it, it, as the full-time head coach and, and how the dynamic works with the assistants that are around him, all of which are going to be new. Um, so there, there's just going to be a lot of intriguing subplots and elements in a season um, that, that are entertaining and, and fun to watch and worthwhile investing in, even if your team is not starting the season as one of the two or three favorites to come out of the West and, and win a championship. Uh, absolutely, my thoughts exactly. From Joel, what would you need to attach to Wiggins to trade him and return minimum salaries back? Yeah, look, that's I mean, that's the, the problem that we're getting into here is that if you want to get a D'Angelo Russell, a Tobias Harris, you know, somebody like that uh, for $24, $25 million a year, you have to either clear Teague and Gorgie or Wiggins or, you know, some combination of, of salaries that's going to be hard to unload. And Wiggins, with four years and $122 million left on his deal, is just really hard to move right now. I mean, you know, even teams that are willing to accept salary dumps, uh, a four-year max salary dump is a huge pill to swallow. And so, I mean, you'd have to attach first-round picks, you know, maybe a Kogi, things like that. And then... I mean, the cost of that gets pretty prohibitive because then even if you're setting yourself up for future flexibility and and a little bit better kind of um, financial picture that will offer you the ability to, to do different things, you're still in Minnesota that in a place that doesn't recruit free agents very well at all, and you need those draft picks too. And so um, it would have to be something very, very drastic – I think for them to be willing to attach multiple picks with with few protections on them to unload Wiggins and and bring in someone and that's why I just I if if they find a way to Russell I'm still going to be kind of surprised that uh, that Wiggins is the one that that clears the decks on it. Uh, Nikolai, longtime listener, and Jonathan Goldfarb basically asked questions about Russell that I think you've already answered. Um, and Nikolai asked a question about free agency. Our next show is going to really hit free agency harder than we're hitting it tonight. Uh, so we'll check. So follow up uh, for, on next week's show for more of a look at free agency uh, from Jimmy. Uh, and I, I'm going to screw up your last <laughs> name. How, how, what do you think, Nagayan? Nagayan? Win? Win? Probably. Jimmy, That's Jimmy probably win. correct. Yes. Uh, anyway, Jimmy, we appreciate the. Uh, sorry, I'm bad with pronunciations, but we do appreciate the question. Thoughts, thoughts on a shorter regular season to limit injuries and possibly a midseason tournament to keep things fresh in the NBA? That'd be all be great if uh, if the NBA wasn't making billions of dollars off the current TV deal. That, that I mean, that's just it. Yeah. Yes, I, I I would be all for especially. You know, I, I I don't know about the midseason tournament thing. Like, it seems like kind of a fun idea, but that's one of those really kind of see change developments that are are hard to implement. So um, the the shorter season, I would love it. Uh, you know, somewhere in the area of 66 to 70 games, I think, 
is a nice sweet spot in terms of then you can you, you don't have the as much load management as as you had before you'd still get some of it but not to the degree you do with 82 games it would allow you to start the season a little bit later um it would allow you to do a lot of a lot of different things that i think would be helpful for the game the only problem is the owners like making money so do the players so if they were to go to some model like that both excuse me both sides would have to agree to take a significant pay cut and i don't know that either side is right now i mean contracts would pay less because you're playing fewer games owners would make less money because you're selling fewer tickets. And so for that reason and that reason alone, I just think it's going to be a huge stretch for the league to go back to some sort of 66, 65, 70 game season. It just, it, it, it's just tough for, for these guys to say no to money. One more Twitter question. One more question from me. Uh, thanks to, for all the Twitter questions. We, if we need to get to all of them, we will hit some of those topics next week. Do you want to thank Byte Squad, ByteSquad.com. Download the Byte Squad app. Uh, they, are, they have a mem- members program where you can spend five ninety nine dollars a month and get free delivery all month. You can use Talk North as a promo code to get your first delivery fee wave. They keep adding great restaurants. Uh, they now have added Ocean Air in downtown Minneapolis, which is fantastic. And the food shows up looking like it just got delivered by a waiter or waitress. Uh, Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, the Bite Squad app. Uh, make your life easy. Order from them. Uh, from Eric Langsev, if the Wolves can't work out something with D'Lo, wouldn't it be better to wait until next offseason to make big changes to the roster? Teague's salary would be gone, and we, Wiggins and, and Jang would have one less year on their contracts. I think that's probably where we're headed, right? It Well, yeah, it seems that way. Um, it, yeah, so like I guess that's that's the um, pragmatic way to look at it is if if there is no big move, if they have to just use their mid-level exception and that's it all is not lost um it's going to be you know hard to be ultra competitive uh this year going that way but they are not that far away from some real salary cap relief coming their direction and so you know that like he said it would be easier to trade gorgie with one year left on his deal uh wiggins if they're able to do what they believe they can do and, and and get him to be more productive and and help him increase his value, then that makes it easier to move him if they want. Um, and everything becomes easier next summer than it is right now. Right now is, I mean, Gerson Rosas is inheriting a very difficult situation here. And so it would take some extreme gymnastics to open up the space to make those moves. And then, I mean, we'll get into it, I think, a little bit more, um, you know, at, with uh, our, our free agency kickoff show. But the other question or the other um, thing that you have to make a decision on is, is Russell worth that type of uh, investment? You know, th- there are a lot of people who really like him, who think that he really turned a t- corner last year in Brooklyn and is kind of realizing his full potential. There are others that say, yeah, he's a really good player, but not like the game-changing type of a player that might make you want to uh, move heaven and earth to do a deal like this. I mean, the Rockets are trying to do everything they can to bring in Jimmy Butler. He is an established, for, for all of the things that the Wolves went through with him, he is an established superstar who can make a big difference on teams. Um, saying They did the same thing with Chris Paul because he's an established superstar that can make a difference on team on, on, on a team's fortunes. Is Russell that guy yet? I don't know that we know that one way or another. And so if there is that question, um, then are you attaching multiple picks to Wiggins to get off him when you bring in a guy that that has question marks around him? I'm, I'm not sure that you do that. So Yeah, and that's the amazing thing about free agency in all sports. It's kind of the season of irrational exuberance. You know? Yeah. And it's amazing. And you look at the Twins. Twins signed zero free agents this last free uh, offseason that really made national headlines. And they all fit perfectly, and they're all good dudes, and they get along, and they meshed with the younger players, and all of a sudden they have a second-best team in baseball at the moment. I mean, Boston I mean, brought in Kyrie Irving. Everyone yeah. thought it was going to be great, and it, and it fell apart. The Lakers brought in... 
LeBron James, yeah. and they are the biggest yeah. mess other than the Knicks in the NBA at the moment. So, you, yeah, so you don't know. It, it's fun to talk about, though. The NBA offseason is one of the most fascinating seasons in all of sports. We'll do our free agency kickoff show.